welcome to New Game Plus. I'm Tim. This week I'm joined by Donald again. How are you? Oh, look, I'll try to do my best uh, Jordan impersonation. Hello, my name is Jordan. That's very How good. How's that? That's very I good. I think I need to, um, there's not enough chill in the world, in the world within me to get anywhere near Jordan. <laughs> But uh, in the in the recent weeks, we've had the Steam sale, yeah. and uh, it's just ended as we are filming, and I don't think I bought anything, no, did you? I, no, I did not buy a single thing, and it's indeed been a pattern for the past couple of Steam sales, yeah. because I have already bought everything that I could on Steam, to the point where you just see the little in-library tag just pop up on like every second item, Yeah. and uh, do I really need a copy of Euro Truck Simulator 2 DLC? The, no, the answer is I, yes. No, because I bought it previously. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that really seems to be the case now. And even they don't even seem as impressive anymore. It's, no. You see a lot of uh, 10 cent tags on new games and all that. But it's interesting to see even some games were like raising their prices <laughs> and then so they could have a larger percentage off, which is not Molly, allowed. No, no, not exactly kosher right there. Yeah. But, and we also come from a weird position considering we play all the latest games at once. So ultimately, like, I think the best thing to do is just wait for the sales because they're so drastic. But we're in a weird yep. position where we're playing the latest games. The latest games such as, Tim? Just Cause 3. Yeah. Look forward to that later on in the episode. I know I'm looking forward to playing that game. Mm -hmm. But we've also got uh, a look at the Uncharted collection as yep. well as an interview for, for the new Uncharted. Yes, and meanwhile, before all of that, we also have an old game plus where we will look at the Sega Mega Drive. But to kick things off, let's start off with a review of Transformers Devastation. Now, we're here to... Oz, it's always exciting. I know how much you love Gundam. So we're here to talk about the, the latest Gundam game. Robotech. This is the, yeah, this, yeah, this is the Robotech where they turn into cars, isn't it, or something like that? I don't know, yes. I can't keep up with Gundam anymore. And it's funny you should say that, because it actually looks like one of the old Ro Robotech games from the 360. It does. Uh, from the, the, the original Xbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so no one else remembers the Robotech game in your old game, plus let's keep going. But we are talking <laughs> about Transformers Devastation, uh, and we are discussing just how good Platinum Games can make a Transformers game. Yeah, so the last games were all shooters, and they decided, no, we're going to go with beat-em-ups, and who better but Platinum Games so to do that? Yeah, it's it's the, the literal Metal Gear Revengeance. Yeah, Metal Gear. Yeah, the, yeah. the real Metal Gear, because yeah, the yeah, last yeah. ones were the real Gears of War. Yeah, we got it, we got it, we got yeah. it. Um, but it is basically what you expect out of a Platinum game. It's part um, Raiden, it's part Bayonetta. Yeah. It's that hacky, slashy, knock in the air. Super combo. Ridiculous It combos. has witch time. <laughs> it has the stupid magic powers. Like, god but, damn, it's fucking Bayonetta. Like, yeah, it, yeah, it is. And um, it, it works really well for Transformers yeah. because, you know, they're armed with guns and they, they beat things up. And yeah, so they've got different skills and, 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 and different and, speeds. And that is what works is like all of them have different abilities. So Optimus Prime's bigger, he can lift bigger objects. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got Bumblebee, obviously, light, does be bigger combos because he's yeah. quicker with the punches. And, and Sideswipe's the fastest car. So yeah. he, and, and he does, you know, the fastest, like the burnout um, special attack. So, so as, as a Platinum game, I think it works, and especially for its price, it is a budget title. Yes. As a Transformers fan, though? Yeah, it's, it's great. It's a, the graphics are a good change from the pre previous games because um, it's very retro-inspired, yep. very G1-inspired, very, um, you know, the first gen. And all the voices are back. Frank Welker. All the yeah. voices. The voice acting is one of the best parts of this game. And, and it, it does. It, it really, it look, for someone who wasn't big on Transformers, it seems like a nostalgia trip. Plus, it's a Platinum game. Plus, it's a budget title. And the nostalgia trip is so deep because there's a part in the game where you fight Shockwave and he splits into four copies of himself. And three of the oh, copies uh, are dark uh, we, coloured. We get it, we get it. No, but they're dark and coloured, which was what he was based on in the original. Uh, I, was a, I was a Transformers nerd. Really yes. good game. Now, Shani, Tales of Zestiria mm -hmm. is the latest one in the Tales series. Yes, it is. Now, it's one of the probably the, the, the JRPGs that's most well known for kind of breaking the paradigm of stand in a line, be a teenager, get hit by things. In well, combat, I would say. I would say the JRPG has already broken that recently. I said it was one of the first to break the paradigm. Okay. That's literally but, what I said. Yes, but it is, and it's very, very well known for its combat and yeah. how it treats the player almost to be more technical, I guess. Yes, yeah. In the sense that it's your fault for being hit, it's your yeah. fault for not doing as much damage as you could. Yes, and so, and that, that is the one thing it always had going for it, was the fact that you had the combat, all of your characters move around in battle, you can set them to do auto tasks, mm. but then you also take control of them yep. to do like their specific moves and that kind of stuff it's, as well. 
it's one of those ones where you can play it single player, but there's also a multiplayer option, yeah. which adds a little bit of element of depth, where I guess it sometimes takes away almost because the AI is sometimes better than your friends. Yeah, so I, I guess that is the hard part is the AI in this, they've had a lot of time to refine mm -hmm. it. The AI is generally pretty good, yep. um, whereas your friends may kind of suck. And so, so you know, yeah, the, 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 the curse of, you just don't want to tell your mate that he's not very good at video games. Whereas in this game, it's almost like the combat is slightly, I guess, easier than yeah. the previous models. Like the way that they've had characters, there's two different types. There's the normal human, yeah. And there's the Seraph, so they I guess, spirit yeah. form. So they, they have pairs, so one person is human, one pair is the Seraph, I guess, partner. Yeah. So they uh, feel differently, they you play differently, and the way they like attack and use their elements are very different. Like one, The Seraphs are very much elemental based, whereas this one, like the humans can variate between elements, they can variate between partners even, yeah. and how you can actually connect with your partner. But with this complicity that they've had with the partners, they've taken a bit from the character themselves. Yeah, right. Like the, I guess, combat that you play as, uh, the human, it just feels a little bit more easier than, I guess, the last previous titles. But the previous ones were reasonably difficult. Do you they know were reasonably I mean? like, a bit yeah. difficult, and I guess there was a lot more, I guess, and difference in, I guess, how characters played, yeah. and how, I think, even just each battle was different. Yeah, right, right, yeah. And I guess that is the question, though. I mean, a lot of people come into these because each one is its own self-contained universe. Yep. They normally do a pretty good job of yeah. displaying that universe. So at least does it succeed on that front? It succeeds very well on that front. Music's very done very well. The actual full art style, because it's the new PS4 at least, yeah. it's the first one on PS4 and PC. It's surprising. There you go, welcome to, welcome to the world of yep. Japanese RPGs on PC. It's done very, very well. Music, fantastic. Alright, so Shaney's, Shaney's very impressed with the music and the prettiness. Make sure you check out the comment though because I still think it's one of the most refreshing ones in uh, JRPG gaming. I'm waiting for the angry mm -hmm. Welcome to Old Game Plus and it's the 25th anniversary of the Sega Mega Drive in Australia. Yes it is. Um, launched in 1988 in, uh, in Japan and uh, soon after here. 31 million units sold, um, and it's still, well, still on sale now in some yeah, ways. Yeah, it's still sold in this kind of form, which is um, a smaller version with built-in games, but you can still add the old cartridges and the old controllers, which is awesome. It's cool. It, it competed uh, with the uh, Super Nintendo, or the SNES. Um, it was a little bit, in, in some ways, in some of the chips inferior, but it did have one major advantage, which was... Blast processing. Uh, uh, yes, so it had a <laughs> megahertz um, processor was twice twice the speed as, as a SNES, which is awesome. And that suited its its flagship game really, really well. Yeah, um, so Sonic, w the speed that Sonic went, it could actually refresh that screen so fast that you could keep up with it. And Blast Processing is the uh, coolest marketing jargon for something not very special ever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but uh, now, the Mega Drive was the cool console. They, they had a, a different style of marketing. Uh, they went for a little bit of an older market. Uh, it came in black. It was, yeah. it's, it was, it was made to be... So Nintendo went for the kid family and kids and family friendly market. And Sega to fo yeah. <laughs> Sega focused on the teen market. So a lot of fighters and, and brawlers were out at the time. Things like Mortal Kombat, which kind of changed the um, rating system for the video game industry. And they put it on their system uncensored. So and they were appealing to a vastly different market than Nintendo. And one of the big advantages it had with those fighting games is the six button controller. And it started with- The three, three button controller, and, yeah. And uh, they, they went with six a little while later and that was, that was a, a large part to do with the, the fighting games. Yeah, it? So, so things like Street Fighter with high, low, medium, punch and um, kick yeah so six buttons on the face rather than trying to hit the shoulder buttons it um it had a few add-ons his is one of the my favorites uh sonic and knuckles which is uh slots in and you put cartridge you, on top and you put knuckles another to sonic game. yeah put another sonic cartridge in the top and you add knuckles to that game which That's is awesome like the coolest thing ever um and then they might have got a little bit carried away with your uh, yeah it was a good <laughs> idea <laughs> and then they got carried away with that idea um so the Sega Mega Drive kind of, you know, was starting to compete with other disc-based systems at the time. So they decided to add a CD attachment and they started to add a 32-bit attachment. 32X. And the 32X. Yeah, and they uh, just fragmented which a little bit. fragmented their audience. But some of their add-ons are um, a bit of a foreshadow of the game industry today, which is like a mega modem 
which um, on, allowed online gaming. And the other thing was the Sega Channel, which allowed downloading of demos and games through cable TV in the US. Well, they skipped out a little bit with the Saturn and then got started with that again on the Dreamcast. Um, the, the market fragmented a bit, I think confused everyone a little bit yeah. with the Saturn. But, but it, was a, it was the cool console to have at the time, yeah. the, the Mega Drive was. It was and, and, uh, and it did what Nintendo don't. Uh, yes, they did some awesome trolling. We did like that at the time as well. Blast processing does what Nintendo. That was good stuff. But uh, yeah, 25 years of the Mega Drive in Australia. Um, the cool console, the grown-up console. Yep. No longer for kids. And still available today. I'm here with Arne Meyer, the Director of Communications from Naughty Dog. How are you today? I'm doing really great. I'm glad to be here at PAX Australia for the first time. Yeah. Um, now, so of course, Uncharted 4 is coming very soon. Like, what was the drive from Naughty Dog to return to Nathan Drake's adventures? Uh, it, it's actually really simple. We do so many things by gut, and uh, we were saying, oh, you know, is there another Uncharted game within us? Is there a story we could tell? We're sort of exploring ideas. As we're exploring the ideas, you know, everything started feeling good, and we're like, oh, yeah, like, there is another story to tell, and I thought it was really interesting because we started exploring more of Drake's past and the fact that he's kept secrets from a lot of people, and that was a really great direction to take this game. Yeah, and you're also working on the latest console, the PlayStation. Well, has that sort of unlocked new um, opportunities in terms of the massive set pieces that the franchise is known for? Yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest thing, and uh, if you go back and look at the E3 gameplay that we released, is we're really able to layer a lot of the gameplay mechanics that in previous games were standalone and really introducing a lot more choice in terms of how you're approaching it, but it's also letting us take the set pieces to a next level because you're able to layer you know, free-flowing physics objects and the rope and gunplay and all these crazy things. So if you look at that E3 sequence, a lot of what we're trying to do with Uncharted 4 is actually demonstrated there in just little bits and pieces. And this also, this also comes after the critically uh, acclaimed uh, The Last of Us. Like, what lessons have, do you guys carried over between that and this game? Uh, we learned a lot, and a lot of the, the big thing that you're seeing in this is that we really try to create wider environments for you to play in and give you a lot more choice, but also imbue a lot of that built-in narrative that you get from checking out the environment and all of the detail that's in there. And if you look at a lot of the things that we're doing, you're, you're having a lot of choice to go through in, in the E3 sequence when you're driving the Jeep. There's all these different alleyways that you could go through and go down. If you go back to the PSX gameplay demo from last year, we actually showed the media behind closed doors the fact that you could approach that entire uh, cliff traversal area in a completely different way and like skip around everything you saw. And that's like the biggest thing is that we're really introducing a lot of choice of exploration in Uncharted 4. Are we also trying to use these new environments to try and like provide more depth to these to these cities, to the um, Uncharted universe as well? Yeah, for sure. It, it was, we put so much detail in all of our games and it's really important for us because that's really what makes you feel grounded in the universe and grounded in the game world and gets you invested in what's happening. And by being able to pack in a lot more detail, being able to have increased broad distance so you can really sort of see the world that you're in, I think really brings the world to the game world to life. Yeah, and as much as like everyone acclaims a single player mode, Uncharted's also got this quietly successful multiplayer mode, hasn't it? And you guys have enhanced up at number four, haven't you? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, this is the third iteration of Uncharted mul multiplayer and our fourth attempt at multiplayer. Um, I think that we're really learning from everything we've done before. We, even though we haven't been, you know, we don't have a huge community behind it, we have a really uh, passionate community. We still have players who are playing Uncharted 2 multiplayer, believe it or not. Uh, and it's a really strong, you know, base that you can always go in and find the game. So we've taken everything that we've learned from each of the games, and we're trying to create this ultimate version of Uncharted 4, or of Uncharted multiplayer with Uncharted 4. And when can people check out um, Uncharted 4 in the multiplayer mode? Uh, so we have an Uncharted 4 beta that comes out from, it'll be available from December 4th, December 13th. Uh, it's available if you own the Uncharted Nathan Drake collection. Uh, fantastic. Thank you very much, Arne Meyer. Thank you. Now, Timmy, the wait for Uncharted 4 is so, so far away, or at least it feels that way, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it certainly does. Luckily, Sony has drummed up together the first three Uncharted games in the series and brought it out for the PlayStation 4 remastered called the Uncharted Nathan Drake Collection. Yes, and I think it is a good time for it because it's that period where uh, if you played all these games on release like I did, you may be interested in well, a replay of it and 
certainly an upgraded version of them. So it's always a good time to recap as well, and this is the perfect collection to do it on. Now, this all features all the games in 1080p, glorious 1080p, as well as 60 frames per second for each game. There are a few things that have been omitted, um, including the Twitter support, as well as <laughs> multiplayer, but... Since Uncharted 4 is coming out very soon, I don't think many people are going to care about the omissions. Yes, uh, especially uh, the multiplayer was never a strong suit of the Uncharted series, but un uh, Uncharted 2 had pretty good multiplayer. Um, but not a lot of people were playing it for the multiplayer. Everyone yeah. was playing it for the story, for the single player Naughty Dog experience. Exactly. So it was Naughty Dog's uh, way of, of doing um, Indiana Jones with a bit of um, like a modern day flair yes. and a bit of short quips and all that sort of stuff, some quotable stuff. So the game looks fantastic. There's a bit of screen tearing here and there for some of the older games. And Uncharted 1 unfortunately it does not play as well as it, as it used to. It hasn't aged that gracefully. Visually, yes, yep. the gameplay not so much. Like it's a bit stilted at times, but it's still fantastic as a total package. Like yes. Uncharted 3 still plays incredibly well. All of them look brilliant for, for when they came out. I mean, we're looking at Uncharted that came out almost nine, eight years ago. Yep. So putting it in that context, it's still a pretty remarkable collection. You, you can certainly see the progression that Naughty Dog have made as developers progressing from uh, mm -hmm. the first Uncharted on to 3. Yeah. And they're all fantastic games. They all play very well. Great experience. If you haven't played it on PS3 yet, definitely worth a pick mm -hmm. up. Uh, and if you have played them on PS3, maybe worth a revisit. It's also um, upscaled by Bluepoint Games, the same guys who did the MGS HD collection and Zone of the Enders. So you got to expect some upper echelon of quality. meets Clark Kent. Ah, I love it. I love bringing people together. How are we? Lex. Hi, hello. Lex, it is a pleasure. Ow, wow. That is a good grip. You should not pick a fight with this person. You know the oldest lie in America, Senator? That power can be innocent. You're gonna go to war. That son of a bitch brought the war to us. You know you can't win this. It's suicide. The greatest gladiator match in the history of the world. Son of Krypton versus Bat of Gotham. You're psychotic. That is a three-syllable word for any thought too big for little minds. It's time you learn what it means to be a man. Down. If I wanted it, you'd be dead already. If man won't kill God, the devil will do it. What have you done? with you. I thought she was with you. It's Batman versus Superman, the dawn of a new franchise. Yes. Uh, so, uh, personally, I'm not too excited about this one. No. Uh, Justice get, League yeah. movies, I'm looking forward yeah. to. Yeah. Um, but not so much with the people that they've cast for these roles. What, so. Brad Pitt just ain't doing it for you? <laughs> Is it Brad Pitt or Matt Damon? <laughs> <laughs> They're Fuck the same no. person, right? <laughs> now, Shaney, it is December, and mm. as the dust settles on what has been an amazing year in video games, we're starting to think of our game of the year, thinking, what can we, what can we think of? What games are really out there that, that are truly amazing? Mm -hmm. Avalanche Studios has come busting in with guns blazing, goes, shut up. Shoves just cause three down your throat and says, "How do you like them apples?" I like well, it go, guns blazing is actually a weird word because I didn't actually shoot many guns in this game because I had the best weapon 
that doesn't shoot bullets. So that uh, includes the grappling hook, mm -hmm. correct? So Just Cause 3 um, gets, you, gets you into the shoes of Rico Rodriguez, a big revolutionary superstar who's um, kind of adept with explosives and action uh, B-movie sequences. Mm -hmm. um, and he tries to overthrow uh, Medici, which is, t uh, which is taken over by the ravenous Di Ravello, as well as his uh, little cohort. So you go in there and it's uh, used as an excuse to chuck a whole bunch of stuff get some explosives, blow everything up, and liberate this massive town, this beautiful city. This story isn't really what you, I guess, want to go in for this game, mm -hmm. but there's a lot there that, like, the characters are really, really well written, the dialogue's funny, yep. it doesn't really rely on, like, memes just to, like, go bad jokes. But it is really honest humour, mm. and I love just how much piss it takes out of itself. Yeah. It's, just, it's just really honest humour, and it's fantastic. Like, it's... You know, just cause one and two were fairly serious, but Rico Rodriguez likes to make fun of himself along with everyone around the town of Medici. Yeah. So, with the gameplay in mind, the game looks absolutely gorgeous as well. Yeah. Some really good shading in tow, and just the amount of stuff on screen and particle effects is just incredible. But how do we find the gameplay? The gameplay itself is just basically fun. It's kind of a concept of like you can do what you want to do you can tether multiple vehicles to other things to make them crash into each other yeah. make huge so, explosions here and there you can blow up things with guns if you want to use guns or so explosives the, but you know yeah we should we should uh, segue segue into the three main uh main tools mm. of the trade so the first one is a grappling hook which yeah. returns from just cause two you can mm -hmm. tether things together like fuel tanks and watch them explode as you yep. pull them into each other, get two guys, tether them to each other, yep. and uh, and then watch them as they headbutt each other in the face and die um, instantaneously. And there's also two, th so you also have the parachute as well, which yep. returns from the first Just Cause and Just Cause 2. Now the wingsuit is a completely new addition, and it is absolutely amazing, the amount of inertia, momentum you can get, and being able just to glide around the city will make you think twice about ever using cars or trucks ever again. It's one of the smartest ideas to ever do. Give you the option of the fastest movement in the game at the start. Yes, five minutes in, you have the parachute, grappling hook, and the wingsuit, and the game just goes, here are the tools of the trade, use them the way you want to, go nuts. Yeah. And I think it's absolutely amazing. The game doesn't hold your hand at all, it lets you go through any single uh, liberation of town or outpost, whichever means possible. You can go in, not fire a single bullet. It is just fun in its purest sense. Just Cause 3, definitely go and give it a go. It's awesome. If you do enjoy fun, you will most likely enjoy this game. The probability is very high though. 99.95. Those weird 0.5% of people. <laughs> Explosions and lots Boom. of them. Uh, it's something I'm looking forward to playing over the Christmas break. It's uh, playing on your PC, though, yes. right? Yes. Maybe definitely. as that recording, maybe not on your console because the game we reviewed it on a PC, obviously, but the console versions has have been out now, yep. and there've been reports that the performance hasn't been the best from them. That it can barely maintain 30 frames a second. On, this is not even on the PS4 version. Good luck if you're on the on the Xbox. For once, too many explosions is a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping the frame rate is probably not yeah. ideal, but here's hoping that they actually get around to patching it because yeah. it's a fun game. Of course, but here's the thing though. It's been kind of a running theme, at yeah. least very much in the later part of this year, of the console versions being far, far inferior to the PC versions, just in terms of performance. Like, you have your exceptions like Metal Gear Solid uh, 5. And the big exception, Arkham Knight, yeah. which still doesn't... <laughs> just got released on PC and still doesn't still support SLI or Crossfire. And it just runs absolutely terribly. <laughs> and so now it's released six yeah. months after it's... Well, even longer than six months after yeah. the consoles, and no one cares anymore. <laughs> I think that the, not not many people cared not long after that release. It was kind yeah. of an unremarkable Batman game. But watch our review a couple of months ago <laughs> for our thoughts. But even games like Fallout Four, games like The Witcher Three, they were vastly superior on PC, and you didn't you didn't really get that from the last generation. Yeah, where like it, you could. Uh, play on the consoles fine and dandy not feel like you're getting a subpar product I, I think that certainly lends itself to the architecture of the the newer consoles mm. and everyone's getting used to the x86 architecture yeah. and it is much more simple to code for all of the platforms at the mm. same time it's just that the pcs have a little more overhead to play with they can have uh, systems that are much more powerful than the consoles so i think when it comes down to it when they focused uh, on the consoles first, 
it worked well. And yeah. then the ports came to the PC later, and yeah. maybe they weren't great ports, but, but it actually, worked that, out. They're almost the best ports, I reckon. That was the golden yeah. age of console ports. Yeah. But uh, this, we're still very early in the generation, so hopefully things will improve down the track. Speaking of down the track, we've got an ep another episode next week, don't we, Tim? Yes, we do. We take a look at indie games from PAX. Yes, we also look at take a look at Xenoblade Chronicles X. As well as more Japan Film Festival films. Yes, and I know now that it's Ben Affleck <laughs> in that trailer. Yes, so we've all worked <laughs> that out. So. Yes! That's it for this week. Visit our website, www.newgameplus.tv. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash newgameplustv. And yes, I know it's Ben Affleck. <laughs> Follow our Twitter and Instagram at newgameplustv. Ben Affleck, Ben Affleck. Oh yeah, YouTube. Go to our YouTube and Twitch pages. We are newgameplustv. Thank you, Donald. Thank you, Ben Affleck. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Where's my bowl of blue M&Ms? <laughs> No, you want you pick out the yellow and the brown ones because they're Hawthorne colours. I do actually. I've watched you do that. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I eat them in football colours, and I make sure that the teams I don't like, I never eat colours that are like each other the same. So if there's a whole heap of like yellow and, and blue ones there, I'll eat all the yellow ones at once and the blue ones at once, so I don't accidentally eat West Coast combination. But if there's brown and yellows, I'll eat them together. <laughs> I think you've got an ending for the show. <laughs> <laughs> is that weird, is it? <laughs> <laughs>